Hello tacticians, it's Nox here playing Warmer 40k Tacticus and wow what an update we have at the beginning of the year. So not only are we in the middle of the Jane Zar event, and please do let me know how you're doing, we have got this fabulous update which has just dropped the other day. If you haven't got it please refresh your uh, stores and you should be able to download it. But before you do, if you are having issues on uh, some of the elite campaigns uh, that we've already got unlocked, make sure you do them first because they have mentioned in here that they have uh, increased the difficulty uh, of the Indominus campaign. However, in this build, what have we got? We've got the new XV-8 Crisis Battlesuit. I'm quite looking forward to this one. I've got a few of these models myself. I've enjoyed painting them. And I will admit, I am looking forward to seeing how they are in the game. Hopefully, they're maybe a bit better than I am with them on the tabletop. But never mind. We'll skip past that. We've got Morgan Ra coming back. Fantastic. I didn't do too great in the last mission. I only got about 70 shards. I've upgraded my team. Uh, since then uh, with Jane Zara. I'm about 100 shards in now. So I'm looking forward to Morgan Ra coming back to see if I can get a few more shards there unlocked. The upcoming events, we've got Vara Tigurius <laughs> and Show Cell, which isn't a massive surprise because the way the cadence is going, they'll be releasing them uh, like the XV8 battle suit coming out and then later on they'll be doing the quest to get more shards for it. Uh, it mentions the Elite Dominus's campaign 17 to 24 is now open and Fall of Cadia 1 to 16. I haven't actually tried these yet. I'm actually busy farming, uh, trying to get some of my tunes higher to try and get some more of these Jane's Art uh, shards. But as soon as this event's done, I'll be going through that. And if you're interested and you want to see how I do these, let me know and I'll record them for you. And we have a new tournament mode. This I'm looking forward to. I quite enjoy the old tournament, but this seems something different. It says, pick your highest rarity before starting the match. Okay, you say, let's, you decide legendary. So when you match with the opponent, the battle is set to the highest rarity covered by both players. So really, you don't want to be choosing that legendary unless everyone's legendary in your team. Um, personally, I'm probably going to be going for uncommon, maybe rare. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. And you get to pick up uh, power-ups, which are placed across the map. Now, who knows what these power-ups do? Um, but it certainly seems something interesting, and there's certainly something to mix everything up on how we're playing this game, which I am all for. Uh, we can also now filter for units in the deployment phase, which is really useful in those quests, because I know there's a lot of us out there who've created uh, spreadsheets to try and say, well, what can I use here? What can I use there? And, you know, it, having it done for you is even better. So thanks a lot for that quality of life upgrade. And the battle pass improvements. We now switch between the battle pass missions and normal missions with a button of both top of both screens. This is just another little quality of life improvement, which I am all for. Premium rewards now show a tooltip for the reward instantly instead of direct uh, leading you to the buy feature. All of this is great. You know, minor improvements, but definitely something that says they care for the game and want to make it as easy to use as possible. They've even introduced a new balance with a new Terminator armor trait, which is uh, going to reduce the first hit against this character deals 75 percent less damage now i'm assuming that means if you do six hits so only get them first out of the six um which does less damage however when you have that many hits they tend to be uh not very hard hitting anyway so it's going to be really good against those one big powerful shots and maybe not so great against the multiple shots but with the high armor they have i'm guessing it's not going to be massive impact there They've got some balancing changes. I'm not sure what caused this, but the close combat weakness, which the Tau have, is now reducing damage, ranged damage by 25% when they leave melee. R really? Um, the, the Tau are surviving in close combat? Well, that never happens on the tabletop, and I, I guess uh, maybe some people are managing to get away with it in this game too. But is it needed? Well, I guess they believe it was. Maybe it was to do the quest that we're currently going through. Um, they've increased here, as I mentioned earlier, the Elite Indomitus campaign difficulty to align it with the other campaigns difficulty. So, if you haven't already done it, make sure you get in there quickly uh, before you uh, do the update. And they fixed a few bugs. And we get Gold 2. This is going to take a lot of uh, farming, because if we look at one of the two characters I've got to Legendary, let's have a look here, here's Arki Matos, desperate to be upgraded again. I'm not upgrading you, sorry mate, you're, you're high enough already. And if we look at this Legendary piece, 
we all see it only can be found in Mirror Battle 71. What is it? The Blessing of the Dark Gods. And we go there and we have a look. And it's actually 12%. So every day, if you want to get this, you're effectively going to get one a day, roughly. Because it is 12%, you might get two. But let's be honest, you're looking at one a day and you need nine of them. So if you're looking to get gold too, you better start farming these now. Am I farming them? No. Uh, not yet. I, I've got other people I need to get up to silver. Uh, in fact, my roster isn't looking too shabby at the moment. I'm getting I'm quite happy with how it's looking. There's a few here, like Creed. He needs to go up to silver. Uh, but otherwise, I'm doing quite well across the board, mostly up to silver with a few left in bronze. And I recently unlocked Tank Smasher, who's sitting there in Iron 3. Sorry, not even Iron 3. Stone Rank 3. I'll update him one day when I've done everyone else. So, the Jane Czar event. How are you guys doing? As you can see, I've managed to get 110 out of the 150 shards, and with a total number of path points of 7,182 out of 7,500. I am hoping I'll hit that 7,500, but I've been focusing on uh, clearing up all the other points I've had from Battle 4 and below on all three um, paths. So who am I using for these uh, paths? Well, for the Alpha path, I'm using Makatep, Snakareka, and Kalendis, and I use them for the first four. Uh, they're at Silver, Silver Two, uh, which I had no problem with. I didn't manage Silver, f um, I didn't manage Battle Five, uh, so I threw in Snotflogger as well. Uh, if you do have a Tank Smasher, he's another one to throw in there. But do bear in mind that these two last characters don't have a range attack, so you will have to then have a third attempt at the path to actually clear all, all uh, requirements. The Necrons, well, you can only choose Necrons, so that's not too difficult there. And for ranged, uh, just use your best ranged characters, and I've got a few here. I've got Snapareka, Golgots, Calendis, Eldrian, and Shosil. They're the best for me, but who are the best for you? But the thing to bear in mind is you can't use Chaos here, or your Death Guard. Uh, not sure why. But uh, there you go. So you're only allowed to use your Necrons, your Orcs, your Eldar, and your Tau. Um, it, it's one of those things, you know, they've made it artificially hard for a reason. It is a shame. I would have liked to use my uh, Chaos, but you just have to use what you can use. Moving on to the beta teams. Now, here you can use your Ultramarines, your Sisters of Battle, your Imperial Guard, and the Black Templar. And the way I've done it, I've broken it down into three areas. Again, I like having the three. I'm sure you can actually do it in maybe two if you've got uh, enough uh, c uh, characters to do so. But I've broken it down into three, try and make it easier on myself. Uh, we've got the Bolter, no Blast, and no Summon. Now, again, bear in mind, with no Summon, you can take people in who can Summon, like Yarrick if you have them. But just don't hit that button to Summon. Uh, and then you're fine to carry on. And here I've used Yarrick, Sirtis, Ros, and Bellator. And then we move on to the power. We've got Yarrick again. And all of a sudden you can now summon uh, here, which is very useful. And you've got the Black Templar, Godswill, Burchard, and Thor Reed. Now, not everyone will have these. And unfortunately, the power um, weapon requirements may stumble a number of people here just because, as you can see, it's mostly Black Templar. And then maximum two hits. We have actually got quite a few choices in here. Uh, so just choose your best lot. I've put again, put Yarrick, he's great. Creed, again, summon away. Um, you know, Varro, Sirtis, Godswell, Thorid, and Roswither, who I haven't covered here, but it's, it is actually there as a choice. Now, again, I've managed to get up to Battle 5. I haven't attempted Battle 6, but I'm busy clearing up, trying to max out as many points as I can. And it's the case for all of these. Um, just do your best. It is an end game thing. This is something you should sit back and enjoy. Try and figure out what you can use and how well you can do it. Most of the time, try and get to the very top and block off where the people, uh, where the enemy come in. Um, that will actually reduce the number of characters you need to kill in one go, make the path a lot easier. The problem can be is actually getting to that top where they're uh, spawning them. And on some maps, they have three or more spawn points, so you can't actually block everything off. And finally, the Gamma Teams. Now here, you, you know, you've got the widest selection. The only thing you can't use is Orcs. Uh, so people, I think, this might be one of the easiest um, paths to go along. However, there's always however, um, <laughs> the path, the, the actual uh, tunes you can use are, again, fairly restricted. So you're going to have to have multiple attempts at the path. And I, I personally couldn't get it to anything less than three. Um, and even that, I think, is probably pushing it in some areas. So I've got the No Mech, Bolter and No Fly, with Yarrick, Sirtis, Burchard and Roz. Again, four characters which we've seen in the beta uh, path. So 
I'm thinking if you have Yarrick, get him geared up. Certus again, Burchard and Ros. Oh, make sure you got them all there. Uh, for the Pierce incisors. Well, I guess he had to be used somewhere. Uh, he's a healer. He probably can be useful. Mine is absolutely pathetic and dies to a stiff breeze. But we've got Harkon, Athana, Eldrin and Shosil. Really good. All can do pierce damage. And a fantastic here. Especially if you can get Shosil with all three of his drones out. They do really uh, do some damage and do some work here. And with the minimum four hits, again, Bellator, Aleph, Angrax, Volk, Harkon and Rockbone. Rockbone here is probably the key, which not many people will have. He is a healer which is really useful when it comes to later on in the paths. Um, but he does have uh, the, the minimum number of hits required. So he is actually really useful for healing up Harkin or whoever might be getting uh, damaged. But for the rest, the, they're pretty much standard. Go in and, and try your best. As I said, I really love these uh, campaigns with the uh, Path of the Phoenix that we've had. And I'm kind of looking forward to if they bring out any new ones for existing characters. It'd be fantastic if we see easier paths for existing legendaries who are not possible to be farmed why not have uh, a simpler way of introducing people it's like oh I i'd love to go for let's just choose one not so at random typhus can't farm him why not have a path for typhus a path of plague maybe but make it easier than the existing paths something that someone can actually go in and start just have it there all the time and actually start working towards and they can unlock their first legendary because they're working through the existing campaigns, gearing up their tunes, and they can get Typhus as a reward because of everything that they've been doing along the way. So, how are you doing in the Path of the Phoenix? And what do you think of these new updates? So is there anything you wish they would include? Or maybe something you wish that they didn't? As always, please like, comment and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you next time.